Hi, welcome to our first of our presentations about variation and statistics. Uh, in this first presentation, we're going to be really mainly considering on the different types of variation uh, because there's several different types that you need to know about. So, variation, first of all, setting the scene for what variation is. Variation, putting it simply, is differences between individuals. Now, obviously, here we have three individuals, all of which are different. These two uh, are look fairly similar, but there would be some subtle differences and variation between them. This one obviously is much more different from the others. So variation, just in the differences in characteristics. Sometimes we use the word trait to show a particular, talk about a particular feature in a characteristic, how organisms differ from each other. And let's consider the one of the set, pairs of um, sets of variation that you need from specification interspecific variation, the variation between different species. So uh, between this lovely little mouse and this lovely little slug, there are a number of variations. For example, um, you've got eyes on the side of the head versus eyes on stalks. You've got uh, furry skin versus sm slimy skin. Um, this has got legs, this hasn't got legs. There's no doubt that they are different species. But remember that just because things are different species doesn't necessarily mean that they, they, are, they aren't fairly similar to each other. There are lots of species of seagull which are different species, uh, but yet they look fairly similar superficially. Similarly, Darwin's finches, they are all different species, but they look kind of similar except for their beak shapes and a little bit about colouring. Uh, but they are different species, even though they look similar. Uh, Intraspecific is between members of the same species. Inter, uh, sorry, uh, so it, it's within the same species. Yeah. Whereas interspecific is differences between different species. This is the same species. It's within the same species. Uh, classic example: dogs. Yeah. These are all uh, show variation. Um, th obviously, the variation doesn't need to be this extreme. Um, this is Canis familiaris, the dog. Uh, we've caused this by selective breeding. The original common ancestor would have been much more uh, wolf-like and we've exaggerated different characteristics as we've bred different dogs. Uh, so there can be lots of differences and they can still be the same species as well as you know they could be uh, quite similar looking. So causes of variation. Well, I, back at GCSE, you'll have done both inherited and environmental, or we're talking about genetic and environmental variation. Um, and let's think about each in turn. First of all, genetic variation. This can be due to differences in genes. You might have different forms of the same gene, different alleles. Eye colour being the classic example of an allele controlled uh, difference. Now, sadly, uh, in real life, there is much more complicated than the uh, situation we're giving you here. Uh, blood type, for example, is controlled by three different alleles, A, B, and O. Um, there are th alleles that interact. There are alleles that are inherited in combination of two things at the same time, what we call dihybrid inheritance. All those are going to be considered next year, though, as part of the second year of the A-level. Genetic variation due to mutation, a change in the sequence of DNA. We've looked at mutation in the past uh, when we did our work on uh, DNA. And remember, it's, it only needs to be one change in one of the base pairs. So you end up with a completely different uh, amino acid and then a completely different sequence. Stops it folding properly and you've got a different uh, characteristic appearing. Genetic variation due to meiosis. Now, two possible things. You've got independent assortment. So the chromosomes randomly separating to different places as they gradually separate through the processes of meiosis. And also crossing over. The idea that when two uh, alleles touch each other at a particular locus, you can get new combinations of different uh, alleles appearing in different places. So leading to further variation within the gametes. And last of all, the genetic variation caused by the different combinations of those gametes. It only takes one sperm to fertilise one egg, but the selection of alleles in that sperm cell is completely random, as is the selection of alleles in the mother's egg cell. So the random combination that uh, half the genes that it gets from each parent 
is going to be completely random and result in a unique individual. Environmentation can be uh, variation can be environmental, but um, it's pretty rare for it to be purely environmental. For plants, it's more common. Um, they are particularly affected by the environment because they can't get up and move away from the conditions. Wherever they are, they are stuck with it. So they might receive more or less light, water, nutrients, and that will affect how tall it grows, um, the leaf size, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. So the, the variation can particularly affect plants simply because they're stuck with the conditions that they've got. Um, in animals, scarring, such as this scarring on the back, um, I believe this is a whale or a dolphin where it's been scarred uh, continually across the back. It's a propeller scar. So as it swims underneath the boat, the boat's propeller has uh, hit the skin and caused scarring all the way on the back. But it's environmental. It can't be passed on to the next generation. Lots of things, though, are combination of the two in both environmental and genetic causes. Height, for example, um, you inherit tall genes, but if you have a poor diet or you have an illness during development, you're not as tall as you could be. Uh, sunburn, um, people with very fair skin, just like mine, I burn at the merest hint of bright sunlight uh, because I don't have a lot of melanin in my skin. I don't have that pigment that helps to protect me from sunburn. Um, that's not to say you can't still get sun damage with um, even darker skin. You can still get skin cancer you cause even, uh, even when you have the melanin in your skin. Um, but it helps to protect against damage. Um, so this, the colour changing, that's environmental. But the skin type, well, that is caused by your inheritance. So it's a combination of the two. Yeah, It's a combination of mixture of both environmental and genetic factors. Similarly, um, here in these rabbits, you've got pigmentation, which is caused by, by both environment and genetics. Um, the temperature they are brought up in can either activate or not activate a certain enzyme. And when the enzyme is uh, working, it makes melanin appear um, in skin extremities. In other words, where the places where the rabbit is coldest, so tips of the ears, nose, tail, feet, places where it gets coldest, um, the uh, enzyme can work and break down a particular chemical which makes melanin appear in its skin. So it has dark spots and we call that pointing at the end of the tips um, and it, it then has that pigmentation. Um, if grown at uh, hot, hotter temperatures, they don't have that pigmentation. It's a permanent change. Yeah, It's not a temporary change now uh, when it gets up to 30 it disappears. It if it was raised at an early age at that temperature. Discontinuous versus continuous variation. Something else you need to be aware of. Discontinuous variation is variation where there is discrete, distinct, absolute, yes or no categories. It's either this or it's that. Um, and it's usually genetic and not influenced by the environment. Uh, male and female gender is one example. Colour of certain types of flower, red, white. Um, and the blood group we've mentioned before, A, B, A, B, O, they are discontinuous variation. And they're usually shown either as a bar chart or a pie chart. Notice in, uh, distinctly in our uh, bar chart, you've got gaps appearing between each of the bars. You don't have that in a histogram so, and you have names of categories. So it's not numbers data, it's name data, word data. In continuous variation, you get a much bigger graduation of characteristics from one to another. So um, height and weight are two classic examples of things which would be like this. Uh, but you can also, it can be things you can't see, but things you could measure. So physiological measurements um, ranging from uh, reaction rates, heart rate, efficiency of uh, production of a particular chemical. Um, and so you get most in average in the middle and a fewer and fewer and fewer at the extremes. This is usually a histogram. Histograms, remember, are um, usually in frequencies and categories, but the categories are numbered categories. Uh, and if you uh, look at them, you end up with an average in the middle. Um, we'll talk more about averages in the next presentation. Um, and you get this classic distribution, what we call the normal distribution, bell-shaped curve. So imagine slicing a bell halfway through, 
and the, as you look through, the sides look like a bell. Uh, most of your um, members fall within that sort of uh, the main part of the bell, fewer and fewer towards the edge. So uh, let's just have a little look at a summary between discontinuous and continuous. Uh, I'm just going to whack the button a few times. Whoops. Um, you have f fewer traits and no intermediates, whereas it's a range of gradual sort of distinguished characteristics. Few uh, genes, multiple alleles, many genes, polygenic. The environment doesn't really influence discontinuous variation, whereas continuous things can be influenced by the environment. There's a couple of examples. Um, and it's just a reminder about genotype and phenotype. Genotype being what alleles you are born with, phenotype, how that characteristic is expressed, what you actually see when something inherits something. Okay, uh, we're going to conclude that one there. Um, we'll uh, reconvene with some consideration of some lovely statistics that you need to know about. Okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye.